While it's true that we've learned to be far more open about having aesthetic medical treatment, it remains a bit of a mysterious area for the general public. And most of us are unaware of all the possibilities and options. Like any field of technology, it's constantly advancing. So Karusha attended the most recent Cosmedica event to find out what's new. The event featured international leaders in the field of aesthetic medicine and drew practitioners from across South Africa and the continent. The world of aesthetic medicine has seen a boom in the last few years and now it seems accessible to all of us. Cosmetica is a medical conference where aesthetic professionals come together to learn, share and grow from each other. I'm at the beautiful Vivari Hotel and Spa to experience it all. Even experienced practitioners need to keep abreast of the latest developments and this event offered a series of master classes. Dr. Nushka, welcome back to Mela. Wonderful to always be back. What was the experience like being the scientific director of Cosmetica this year? This has been the best experience of my life. It was a very intimate occasion. We had world-class speakers. I love technology and I love embracing it and bringing it into the Congress. We can have a doctor sitting all the way in London sharing their tips and techniques on what makes a beautiful face. So I'm sure the doctors who attended this year's event are gonna go home with a whole lot of new information. The aesthetic industry is so much more accessible now than it was five or 10 years ago. What are your feelings on that? The problem with making aesthetic services available for everyone is that doctors sometimes may not know when to stop. With the selfie generation, people are looking at themselves a bit too much and a bit too critical. So as doctors, we need to tell patients when to put on the brakes and when enough is enough. What are your top tips for people that are wanting to do aesthetic procedures and haven't yet? My advice is to always test your doctor. You want to look at their before and after profile pictures. You want to see pictures that project a very natural looking face. So that's the type of doctor to look out for. Someone who can give you that look without looking like anything has been done. There's a definite move away from surgery or other invasive procedures and exciting new developments are proving to be a game changer for dermatologists and their patients. Dr. Raj, welcome back to Mela. The technology seems to be moving towards non-invasive, non-surgical procedures. Why are you happy about this? The consumer is walking into solutions which are non-invasive. There's no downtime. It's relatively less expensive. Also, it's undetectable because it looks natural. And I think that's the future. Dr. Varishka Jose Bryant offered expert insight into treatments of the face and mouth. Dr. Jose, welcome back to Mela. Thank you very much. Tell me about the future of aesthetics. I see it as a burgeoning industry that is only growing from strength to strength. I think it is very, very influenced by what the patients are demanding. But at the same time, I think we're growing to realize that it needs to be tempered with some good judgment as well. And what is the importance of sharing information between professionals like yourself? I think it's really, really important that continuing professional development is always happening. The industry is changing the science is constantly expanding falling behind the curve is not an option because we need to maintain patient safety and we need to be ahead of trends as well we're dealing with issues like body dysmorphia etc coming through social media so those are things I think that the aesthetics industry needs to address there was a time when aesthetic medicine was seen primarily as a means of offsetting the effects of aging but more and more young people are seeking solutions for their skin challenges Conducts the Dr. Gupta, welcome to Mela. Thank you. Do you find that the demographic for the aesthetic market has changed from older age group to younger? The consciousness has increased. So people are more aware, so they want to do more of preventive treatments rather than age and then do something corrective about it. Do professionals like yourself have a responsibility to say no to patients? Absolutely. I do it all the time. Like, you know, one or two out of every 10 patients and they have absolutely unrealistic expectations. It's our responsibility to do that. The presentations enabled practitioners to follow process step by step and then apply this knowledge when treating their own patients. Dr. Bada, welcome to Mela. What has been your key takeaway from this? More information, more knowledge, better networking, all together improves our practices and give us the courage that the next day will be much better for us and for our patients. 
I'm fascinated with the relationship between social media and the aesthetic world. The beautiful Paul Tusi is here and I want to ask him more about it. Paul, welcome to Mela. Tell us about the true hype of social media and how it's helped you to grow your brand. On social media, things can be great, but they can be as tough. It's really hard to build trust with people, but it's really, really easy to break it. But I think the most important thing about social media, in my experience, is authenticity. If you can be authentic, real, genuine, whether you're showing your bad day or your best day, people will really be able to connect with you and feel like they can have conversations with you and trust you. Although medical procedures are easily accessible to us all now, it's still important that we ensure that the hands our health goes into are well equipped to handle it. 